Hey everyone, what is going on? My name is Archer Live, and welcome back to the channel. In today's Payday 2 video, we're talking about everything new in Payday 2's 208th update. We've got two new DLC packs, including a new heist and new outfit, as well as some interesting UI and meta changes that are also worth talking about. And so we've got plenty to talk about in this video, so I'm not going to waste too much time, but I will say very quickly before this video starts that I will be streaming this update live on Twitch tonight at 7pm BST UK time. So if you'd like to check out the updates, play alongside me, or maybe even win some DLC codes, from the new update, then make sure you drop by the stream and hang out. It's sure to be a very good time. Additionally, as you all know by now, I'll be giving away codes on Twitch. I also will have a giveaway running on the Gleam website that I've used in the past. A link is in the description to win one of each of the DLC codes via that giveaway if you'd like to also enter there. The giveaway closes on Sunday at 7pm BST, that's UK time, at which point the winner will be emailed, so make sure you check your spam in roughly the next hour after the giveaway ends. It won't be immediate, it'll be a little bit after. So make sure you check your emails and your spam because you very well may miss out on the code if you don't. But with that being said, let's not waste any more time and let's get right into the video. Roll the intro. So like I said, we have now got two new pieces of DLC content, as well as a little bit of free content and some interesting meta changes. So we'll tackle this one by one and start with the DLC content. So let's start off with the heist first. After successfully stealing a priceless dragon statue from the Golden Dagger Triad, the Payday Gang is reminded that violent actions can have violent consequences, and sometimes for others than yourself. It's time to hit the San Francisco docks and rescue a friend in trouble. Hitting a complex of Triad-owned warehouses in the docks district, the objective is clear, get Vlad out alive. This heist is available in both stealth and loud and has a variety of pre-planning options to allow players to customize their approach. We got a bit of an inside look yesterday at the pre-planning available for this heist as part of Overkill's fifth developer update, and as we found out in that demonstration, there are more stealth pieces of pre-planning that are loud, which really makes it worthwhile checking the heist in stealth in order to try some of these things out and see just how well they work. The Ukrainian prisoner heist is valued at the usual £5.19, or equated in your typical currency, the same price as the Dragon Pack and all previous heist DLC packs. Moving on, we then have the Guardian's Tailor Pack to look at. As part of their Chinatown adventures, the Payday Gang are acquiring new threads to fit the occasion. The Guardian's tailor pack includes modern streetwear as well as four masks based on Chinese mythology. First off, we have two outfits, the Ripstop Tactical and the Ripstop Casual, each of which having four colour variations. Both of them go for the exact same four colour options in each of their outfit variants, which is a little bit safe, but I'm not really too surprised because the items are very similar anyway at base. Honestly, not my favourite outfits the game has seen released. I do like them, but I'm not a huge fan of them, and I'm interested to know what you guys think in the comment section below. Maybe I'm being a bit too harsh on them, but I'm just not super keen on the outfit designs themselves. The masks, however, are a different story. We have the Azure Dragon, the Black Tortoise, the White Tiger, and the Vermilion Bird, all four of which in their own way I really like. The Vermilion Bird is maybe the weakest one of the four, I would say. Just the straps look a bit odd in my opinion, but the Azure Black and White masks are all really, really well designed. I like the designs on them. I think they look really cool in characters. And like I said in yesterday's video, it's cool to see some masks that aren't following a typical full face design because in the past we've had masks like Almir's beard and other more tactical masks than that, obviously. They do look quite good on characters despite not covering all of the heisters' faces. To me, out of all the items in the Guardian's tailor pack, the masks are the strongest asset, there's no question for me. But the update also brings out two new pairs of gloves, each of which with four variations and in the exact same way as the actual outfit and the masks, it's again the same colour variations of red, blue, white, and black. The padded moto one is definitely better than the comfort one. I think the colour schemes on the inside and outside of the gloves and the padded one look much better. In particular with the white padded moto gloves, I really like the red undertones on them. I think that looks really slick. It's just a shame that in gameplay you won't really see that as easily because your hands are going to be wrapped around guns. One criticism I do have though is that each variation of the gloves is its own option within the glove section rather than in outfits where when you have an outfit with several variations you go into the outfit and pick your variant. In gloves, they're all just sprayed across the gloves menu. You don't go into the pair of gloves and pick the collar, which is something Overkill I would recommend go back and fix because it just seems very jarring that you've added two pairs of gloves and yet suddenly it looks like there's eight new pairs in the gloves thing. It's a bit misleading and also a little bit confusing. But those gloves, masks and outfits are all contained within the Guardian's tailor pack, which is priced as per usual at similar tailor pack prices at £2.10. Once again, whichever currency is your normal currency, it's the exact same as any previous tailor packs. There is something I would like to bring up very briefly though before we move on to the free content, which is that you might have noticed that this time we've gone for two separate DLC packs and not the one 
one overall DLC that we saw with the Dragon Pack. For those of you that might not remember, the Dragon Pack came with a heist, two outfits, each with four colour variations, four masks, and four pairs of gloves, which as you'll no doubt notice is almost the exact same as what we've got in the two separate DLC packs this time. The only real point of contention is that these two DLC packs are being charged for more than you would have paid with the Dragon Pack, and I'm not really sure how to feel about that because at the end of the day it was really cool to see the DLC be a bit cheaper and this time we haven't got that. It is only a couple of dollars so it's not that bad, but it's just a bit sad that the consumer value we saw in the Dragon Heist has been negated a little bit now. I guess really it depends on personal preference as to whether you want to buy both these DLC packs and whether you think they're worth the money still. The Taylor pack I do quite like, there are a lot of options in there I'm quite appreciative of, the masks in particular as I've said, and some of the glove designs. The outfits are good, just not my favourites, and I'm not sure how to feel about everything having the same colour scheme. It is cool because it unifies all the pieces of content in the Taylor pack, but it does mean it's a bit predictable in how everything appears. As for the heist itself, I'm recording this before I've played it, so I'll put a brief annotation on screen now. To very briefly sum up what I think of the heist so far, very early first impressions, some more accurate impressions will be given on my Twitch stream tonight. But that covers all of the paid content, now let's talk a little bit about the free content and the meta change to the game. So first off, as we know from yesterday, we were expecting a new variant of the Dragon Bomber outfit, and this time the free variant is the Dragon Bomber Black, which I'm going to be honest, is not great. The only reason being is there's just no colour variation, and one of the things I liked the most about the first Dragon Bomber outfit was that it was multicoloured. It looked really nice, and all the colours blended together and complemented each other really well. This just takes all of the colour out and slaps the dragon thing on the back again. I like an all-black outfit, but it does feel like a bit of a downgrade from the original. That's just my opinion, though. But the meta changes are the things that I want to talk about the most, so let's explore some of those. Firstly, they've lowered the unlock of the Rattlesnake Sniper Rifle to level 0 to make it available for new players and ones fresh out of infamy, and they've also improved the Gear 3's Assault Kit to be able to pick up more ammo and address the bug where the Buckshot Triple O ammo type for shotguns negated the damage fall off. Additionally, Shimano Compact Pistols have been tweaked to set them more apart from other Shimano Pistols, and the last weapon adjustment in this update is the Patchet L2A1, which has been reverted back to a high damage tier SMG. An extra change has been made to the perk decks to buff the health granted in the Muscle perk deck when you've got the perk deck maxed out in order to make the perk deck a bit more viable on death wish but let's talk a little bit more about the final changes they've made to the game the most notable changes will be in the main menu as they've increased the font size of some of the items in the menu and renamed crime net into play online and crime net offline into play offline the quick play feature is gone from the main menu and instead now resides within the crime net side menu while playing online and you'll also find the story mode feature in the main menu has been renamed to career mode within that career mode they've also made some more interesting modifications one being removed Moving Shadow Raid entirely, reason being they felt that it was a bit too difficult for the newer players who weren't really used to the stealth mechanics. But the interesting thing is that they've also added an option to skip the heist in the career mode if you fail it once, so I wonder why they bothered removing Shadow Raid if this was a feature they were going to add. Surely it's best to have Shadow Raid in the chronology and let you skip it rather than just remove it. Not really too sure about the logic there. Additionally, they've also changed the tutorials a little bit and moved the stealth tutorial further down in the career mode to let people get used to loud gameplay first before they're offered to try stealth out. As a result, that means they've moved a few of the lessons from the stealth tutorial into the loud tutorial so you know the correct mechanics going into the heists and also tweak some of the pop-ups to have a lot less reminders if you decide not to play them. But finally it's time to lower our hats and press F to pay respects to the old Payday 2 safe house as it has now been completely and utterly removed from the game. It was not a very good tutorial and did not fill its purpose as an introduction to the game and to be fair I can't say they're wrong. The safe house opening little tutorial thing was just not very good. I think really what they should do is make a new safe house tutorial so you actually get to explore the safe house in a bit more detail, maybe let you try the shooting range for example as part of its own little mini mission as a tutorial, but either way the old safe house didn't need to be there anymore, it, it, it just didn't, not in any capacity. I will be honest though, I don't like the font size change in the main menu, it is so jarring that play online and play offline are bigger than everything else in there. It might just be as simple as needing to get used to it, but just having been used to the way the font looked for all these years, seeing it now be so big on the screen just is strangely off-putting, I'm not sure I like it. Finally, for weapons and inventory, as we already know they've reduced the unlock level for the rattles snake sniper, but they've also worked on the weapon and mask inventory icons, so it's clearer to see if certain items are locked behind progressions or DLC. Any items locked by DLC will now have a yellow icon instead of an old red icon, which is very good. It allows you to differentiate things a lot better, and I'm very appreciative of that. But you'll also notice there are more icons per row in your inventory now when you're picking from things to buy, which is something they've needed for a while, to be honest, especially for the masks, because there's so many of them that you have to scroll down for ages to find a mask, and it's so easy to miss the one you're looking for about 50 times. We've all been there. So having more masks on the page at once is probably a better way of being able to spot what you're looking for because you're not having to scroll up and down for nearly as much time. One weird thing I also noticed is that when you buy masks in the inventory in the black market that they disappear from the black market once there's none left to purchase. So as I purchased each of the masks from the Guardian's tailor pack I went back into the inventory and found that they were gone. According to the patch 
notes that's intentional to remove things from the inventory that aren't available so you can't see them, but it's just weird. I don't know why that's a feature they've added. If for no other reason, then it's a good way to check whether you have the mask already purchased or not, or just to be able to see it in the black market. Removing it just seems like a feature you're adding just for the sake of it. I don't really understand that. that that's just me again, though. And there we have it. That is update 208 for Payday 2. In conclusion, I think the DLC offerings this time are pretty strong, you know, maybe not the best stuff we've ever had, but everything is pretty decent. I quite like a good portion of it. The free content is a bit of a letdown. It is only one outfit, and as I said, I'm not really a fan of the new version. I think if I was going to use the bomber jacket, I'd just use the first version. But the meta changes, for the most part, interesting, you know, changing the UI, and again, I'm not really sure why they took Shadow Raid out of career mode, but that's a very small nitpick, so, you know, can just let that slide. But overall, pretty solid update, and now I want to know what all of you think down in the comment section below about update 208. Do you like it? Do you hate it? What would you rate it? Yes, I'm fully embracing the Anthony Fantano meme at this point because every time I do an outro, I feel like I'm slowly morphing into the guy. Seriously though, what you think of the update would be very appreciative in the comment section below because it's good to know what you think of the updates and how it compares to my own opinions about it. Remember, I'll be streaming the update live on Twitch tonight as well as doing the DLC code giveaway, so all the links to those are in the description. But that's about it, so thank you all very much for watching the video. If you have enjoyed it, make sure you give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you're new so you never miss out on any future content from this channel. I'll be back very soon with a brand new video, so until then, look after yourselves, stay safe, enjoy update 208, and I'll see you all soon.